What's up and welcome to another episode of the Scott and Ian show on the SBL podcast. Thank you so much for being here. I am one half of your hosts, Ian Martin Allison. I'm happy to be with you today. We talk a lot about some really fun stuff. Listen, you're going to hear about Demon Slayer. You're going to hear about my trip to Spectre to pick up this crazy, amazing custom base. You're also going to hear, because you clicked on the title, about how AI is going to change everything about our lives. And music, of course, is included. Will it be terrifying and scary? Maybe. Maybe it will. Will it be amazing, thrilling, and, and exciting? Undoubtedly, yes. So check out this episode. We have a really good time. But before you get to dig into it, let me say this. The reason that you don't see advertisements in the midst of our content on the SBL podcast is because the one and only sponsor of this podcast is scottsbasslessons.com. It's SBL. There's a bunch of really exciting stuff going on at SBL right now. Let me tell you about one of them. I am very invested in this because, listen... I got to do a course years and years ago called How to Get Hired, A Creative Approach to Session Bass Playing. Now, did I choose the name How to Get Hired? I did not. Do I think it's a little ostentatious? I do. But do I also think it's kind of correct? I also do. Part two is coming out. I filmed it, gosh, it's probably been about a year and a half, almost maybe even two years ago now. But I'm really, really proud of the course. Basically, what I do is I take songs that I have played sessions on and I break them down. I show you how to play the bass lines. I talk to you about the bass line creation, right? I go through the basses that I used. I go through the pedals that I used. And hopefully, you gain some insight in how to play this stuff, how to think about writing bass lines, how to think about using pedals and sounds and different bass guitars and strings and approaches and techniques in your own artistry. It'll be a bit of perspective for you. So that's coming out. In fact, I think it just went live yesterday. I'm so excited about that. But now you might be saying, Ian, that's not what I need. I need a handheld trajectory through learning. I need to be told what to do because right now I don't even know how, what to do next, how to learn how to play this instrument. SBL is also for you. We have programs like Player's Path, all song-based learning where you play a song and at the end you're like, oh my God, did I just learn triads? It's like, hey, click, you did. We also have deep dives, like if you want to learn how to play Motown music, soul, R&B, funk, if you want to learn how to sight read, there are these things called learning pathways that are deep dives into all of those skills and genres, and it is truly amazing. We also have a thing called the Mentors Program, live streams that happen every single Monday. We have Ariane Cap coming up on Monday, January 30th. We have amazing educators on that. I get to be a part of that as well. So there's so much stuff going on at SBL. So listen, you're not going to hear, you're not going to hear about any like shaving products. You're not going to hear about soap You're not going to hear about web service providers. You are only going to hear about SBL. It's why you're here. Thank you so much for being here. Enough of me. Let's get to this episode. I had this, I had this really cool experience yesterday with Layla Sneary. Do you know Layla? She's a bass player. She's 21. She's in the UK. She posts, if you see her, you'll you'll recognize her. Um, Yeah, she's L-E-Y, L-E-Y-L-A. And I think she posts some stuff. She has her own thing. She posts, I think they repost her, or she works with Bass Player United. Yeah, yeah. How do you spell Layla? L E. Well, she spells it L E Y L A. It'll pop up for you, I bet. And then Sneery is S N E R Y. Yeah, got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Layla's like. Hey, I Layla. Have, yeah, hey, Layla. <laughs> if you watch this, she just started a podcast and she asked me to be oh, the okay. first guest. And it just came out today, that episode. Oh, fantastic. Well, the day that we're recording this. Dude, I got to get better about, like, about like gaming that thing. Like, right now, I'm like, well, it thing. came out today. But, well, that thing of, like, well, we're recording this before it comes oh, out. And I so say it came out. out today. Yeah, it's already yeah, out. Yeah, so it yeah, came yeah. out yeah. Thursday, January 19th. That's what I need to say. But we we talk a lot about 
um, bass playing and life and all that, but she's 21. And something that she does that I admire her so much for is she makes these funny reels where she's working on the thing that she's going to post and just messing up over and over yeah, yeah, yeah. and going and those, swearing yeah. and hitting space bar and starting over. And over the course of the last couple years, she's just gotten better and better and better and better at making content. You know, you know that thing. If you make it and you do it, just like anything, you just get better. So her bass playing is better. Her videos are better, like as she's gone. And she's yeah. talked about this. We talked about on the podcast, this element of people that tell her she's fake or people that tell her she's needs to practice more or that she's not you know, oh, that she has it so easy because she has social media. And I said, who, you know, like, who are those people? And she's like, it's old men. Said, what do yeah, they DM they're... her? What do they DM or, her? May maybe. Or they leave it in her comments, you know? Got it. Okay. And the yeah, interesting, yeah, yeah, th the yeah. thing that I love about what she's doing is she, she is, she's a great bass player. Like she's playing some really cool stuff, but she's also showing you that she doesn't get it right all the time, right? She's actually showing the vulnerability of yeah. all the stuff online that, you know, that you don't see with most people. And I think that's amazing for a 21-year-old yeah. bass player to be doing, right? And having the wherewithal to know, like, ah, this is actually pretty cool to show this process of of this trajectory. I I would not have had the confidence to do that at 21 no way. In fact, I told her, I don't know if I still have the confidence to do that. And she challenged me like, what if you made a video like that? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> what if you, <laughs> you know? try to play something, but screw it up over and over and showing yeah. the process of working on it to get to a better place. And I thought, man, yeah. Right. There's like all this ego involved in, in what maybe what I do, maybe what you do. I don't know. Or people that, you know, feel like yeah. that are supposed to be sitting on this sort of um, some kind of level of guru or some kind of level of like advanced. Right. We sometimes yeah. don't want to show those processes of screwing up. Now, I think you do. I've seen videos where you will play something. You'll go up oh, and you'll turn it into a bit or you'll turn it into something really fun. Yeah, um, and yeah, a learning yeah. opportunity. And that's been really influential on me, man. I try to do that. But I just wanted to shout out Layla, man. Um, and everybody listening, if you you should follow her on Instagram. She's great. And she has a, a brand new podcast that you can find off the back of her Instagram as well. And, um, and, and she's cool. And she's just in the very beginning and figuring it out. And I told Wait, her- Is she down in London or something? Actually, I don't know. I don't know where specifically she is in the UK. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was really cool. And uh, and to all the old guys that have left mean comments to Layla, <laughs> shame on you. Get in the shed. You know, she said she said people are saying to me like you need to practice. And she said, but sometimes when I'm making this stuff, I, I mean, I am. I'm really, and I'm like, yeah, you're yeah, actually, you're actually showing the process of you yeah. practicing. And I'm Dude, like, I'm I freaking practicing here, and it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. practicing. I'm, like, I'm like, next, you just need to respond to these guys. Like, you go practice, bro. Like, <laughs> shut up. What do you think yeah, I'm doing yeah. right now? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, I just wanted to say thanks to Layla for having me on her podcast. I'm a fan. I'm in your corner. So, uh, yeah, uh, I hope I just can't wait to see what you do in the next one year, two years, five years, 10 years. I mean, she's got all her career ahead of her and I think it's really bright. So absolutely. And, and, yeah. And I think there's going to be more people as well, documenting the process, yeah. like obviously shout out to Gary V who sort of like coined that term, yes. but like documenting their process. I think that it's a, uh, it's a smart, smart way to grow on social media. It's interesting to see what that will give people in terms of like optionality, what, you know, what they'll be able to do yeah. once they've grown. Like for somebody like Layla, it's really interesting. You know, when she gets like, I'll just check, she's got like 50,000 followers. Mm -hmm. Like uh, that, as that continues to grow, like, wow, there's a lot of different options that will be, you know, given presented to her. Yes. And I think that's really exciting. And just for anybody else listening to this as well, I think that I've been, um, talking to a few friends recently who've been getting into um, 
you know, getting into going online for the first time and starting up Instagram accounts and YouTube accounts and stuff like that. And they're, you know, as everybody would be when they're, when they're, you know, just starting out, they're worried about it and they're overthinking it. Yeah. And, and most of them are not only overthinking it, they're, they're kind of like, I guess, you know, overly concerned with the financial uh, kickback or opportunities that will come from it. So they're yes. already thinking about the course they're going to create or like, you know, all of that shit, right? How, how they're going to make money from it. And how they're going to monetize it right away. How they're going to monetize it right away. And I actually think that it it is a mistake in many ways to think about that because it can overcomplicate things. And ultimately, before you build an audience, uh, you you haven't got anybody to sell to. That's yeah. the actual key to it. And that's what I meant by, you know, with Layla, that she's going to have a lot of optionality in terms of where she can monetize yes. her brand as it grows, um, whether she starts doing lessons or maybe she starts doing like, I don't know, like apparel or straps, or maybe she does sponsorships with base companies right. or whatever it is. She couldn't do any of that without the audience that she's built. That's Otherwise, 100% right. yeah, like gone are the days, you know, where or to to do that to to build sort of like a, a business off 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 the back of what you do. Yes. Gone are the days where you don't you can, you can't not have a social following. In my opinion, I know, and and I'm I'm just going to state that I'm not saying that it's a good or bad thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's the reality. I agree. It's the reality. Maybe there's an outlier somewhere. Yeah, but I don't know it. In fact, there's people that aren't on social media and who have actually remove themselves from social media who I actually wish they were. So I heard about what they were doing more Same. and they, they had more of a, um, more of a megaphone to the base community that Absolutely. they could communicate through. So, yes. so all that to say, so if all that I was just coming to this point where if you are a, you know, a bassist or a musician and you, you are thinking, Hey, you know, I fancy getting into this online thing, you know, yes, like you should do it. Um, many people say, oh, it's, you know, the time's gone. I should have done it five years, 10 years ago. I say bullshit. I, I totally, think it was. Yes, I agree. I with think, bullshit. yeah, I think there was many, in many ways, it was a little easier. In many other ways, it was a lot harder as well. So there was no tools, you know, you couldn't record stuff on your phone. Like you had to have, it was just complex, man. You, yeah. Like, oh, anyway. Oh, yeah. The barrier yeah, to was, entry was high. The barrier to entry was way high, right? Yeah, so, yeah. and there was nobody to learn from either. Like now you've got all of these inspirational people that you can watch online and you yeah. can learn from, you can model them just to get started. And then you can find your own way after you've modeled them, right? Um, so I guess I'm sort of like coming to the point and saying that, yes, do it, get online, you know, start uploading vid videos, start. And it's not just about, you know, like content creation is a means to an end. What you're really trying to do here is build an audience, you know, shout out to that book, sort of like a thousand true fans by Kevin Kelly. So what you're trying to do is build an audience who give a shit about what you do and the value yes. that you bring. You do that through creating content, but you just, like the content is a means to an end, right? So it's the value that you create, which gives you the ability to build an audience. And then once you've built that audience, you will have, you know, many options of how to, you know, monetize that whether it's going to be a side hustle whether it's going to be a main gig whatever it is but don't in my opinion you should just double down on the the community creation the the you know creating uh, value for a community that will follow you on social media you build up that following and then after you've got legs doing that think to yourself okay how do I? Yeah. Uh, how how do I use this relationship that I've built with this audience to supplement me, like from a financial perspective? How how do I do less of what I freaking hate doing and yes. more of this that I that I love doing? You know. Yeah, and and I think too to your point, in, instead of thinking about monetizing really early, I think you can even go one step before that. So you're saying think about this community, think about building your audience. But I remember before I was doing that. Whenever that came across my desk or my thoughts, I was like, Ugh. like it sounded hard. It sounded vague. I didn't know what it meant. And I think even before that, the Casey Neistat comment of make something that you love to make, make something that you think is cool. Like make yeah, something yeah, that like yeah. you are excited that you wake up and you're like, oh, 
you know, what is that thing? It, it's yeah. prob- if you love it and you are on a social media platform or you're on YouTube, um, you know, Casey Neistat is, if, if anybody listening to this doesn't know, he was like the original daily vlogger who exploded yeah. on YouTube and watching his videos is really, has been really inspirational to me. He was doing a daily vlog and burned out, <laughs> but and over COVID moved across the coast. But now he's back in New York making videos again. Um, but he talks about instead of thinking about money and instead of thinking about like building a community so that you can monetize, his whole thing was never about that. It was more about making something that he was thrilled to make. Yeah, and I think yeah. if you start there, at least for for some people like me, who were not motivated in the beginning by like, oh, I've got to build this audience. I couldn't see the steps. I couldn't see inspiration to audience to monetization like that. I couldn't see the steps to that. So for me, it was make something that's cool. Make something that I'm proud of, that I would be proud to show somebody, that I'd be proud to send a link to. And then that started to build this audience because people could tell, you know, whatever, how passionate I was about it. That you give a shit. Like yeah. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that it wasn't just a play to monetize a year later. You know, yeah, yeah. I guess the, it's it's different audiences need to hear different things and will and will have a different. I think like different wants and needs, won't they? So I totally hear what Casey was saying. I do agree with him wholeheartedly. And I think what's interesting about Casey though is that he is a, a he's an artist who will like. I imagine that if you plonked Casey on a on a desert island, he's yeah. never going to see anybody else again ever. He's still going to create art. He's still <laughs> yes, going to, you're you know, right. he's, you're right about he's that. doing it for the, he's doing it for the art, for yeah. the actual, you know, he's, he's, he's getting the reps in. He's just doing, that's his thing. He, he loves lives to create. To cre- yeah. He loves to create. And I think that the audience I was speaking to or the individual I was speaking to are people that have maybe heard people say, hey, you know, create content, but they're just like, but they can't see the through line. They're like, yes, I don't want yes. to create content. G- great distinction. That's a great distinction. They are not, they are not Casey, right? You, right? you put them on a desert island and they're going to chill or whatever. <laughs> Maybe have a panic attack. But, yes. but they certainly are not going to create content um, or, or create art there. Right. So I think for those types of individuals, they, they sometimes can't see the through line of, you know, like – why why would i create content right you know why yes. would i put myself out there for people to criticize me and and i think that's where I, just to bring it back to my point where i was like the content is kind of like it's you know it's a means to an end it's to for many people not for, for not for casey not for yourself like you guys obviously really love them and ultimately not for me in many ways as well um but for some people i think the content is a means to an end and right. the content is there to serve the purpose of growing a following and to add value mm-hmm. like right now like you add value to a community and gain a following um online through creating video or written content Yes. That's kind of like how it happens. Yes. In the future, maybe it won't be that. Maybe it'll be something else. Maybe you'll add value in a different way. Like I'm not sure what that is, but maybe it's maybe it's something different, right? And you will be able to build a community through doing whatever that other thing is. And I'm sure that people would, would shift back and forth between the different, you know, modes of doing that. So I think just speaking to uh but but still I guess to, to my earlier point, yeah. even though people are like, you know, and I really want to, I've got this, this offline business. Yes. I want I want to take that online because I want to increase my earning potential and stuff like that. For anybody like, like, like thinking like that, or you, you're a musician, you've, you know, that you want to, you know, toy around with going online and just, just from speaking to my friends over, you know, well, I would say the last few weeks, but really the last few years, who 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 play around and, and toy around with doing the online thing, is like really focus on building the building value, getting your content reps in, and building an audience that start following you first before you even sort of like worry about monetizing. And I get it because people are not. I don't think that. Here's the interesting, the uh, the wrinkle, is that yes. I don't I don't think people are being like 
overly greedy or like any of that shit. I don't think they're like, no, when I do, when I create something, yeah. I want paid straight away. I actually don't think <laughs> yeah. it's that. Right. Of course. It, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not that it's the fear that they're going to put six months work in. Yes. Right. And then, and then they won't be able to monetize with nothing to that show. Point. They, yeah, no, they, like they, I think that they, 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 they think they're going to put six months to work in. Yeah. And maybe they'll build an audience, but what happens if I can't monetize them? Mm. And they're like, I've put this six months. So they want early validation. Yes. They want early validation. Right. They want five followers <laughs> and to sell something to one of those followers. That's the, <laughs> yeah. that's the, that's 20%, the validation. 20%. <laughs> yeah. That's the validation. They're yeah. like, oh, wow. I earned some money. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to continue this, you know, continue this process. Mm. So look, and, and there's other people that will tell you that, you know, you can do both of th both things at the same time, build product, build an audience and stuff like that. You absolutely can. Just my uh, my take on it is that sometimes it overcomplicates it and you get so fucking wrapped up in the weeds of like, oh, I need to build a website. I need to, mm. you know, I need to record this course or develop this other product or whatever. And it's just taking up loads of, loads of brain space when ultimately when you first start out creating content you know you might be really terrible at it probably going to be terrible at it yeah you know the it's like three stages the way i think about it first stage just freck just get going just yes. start doing it yeah. and, and and you're going to be shit but just start doing it yeah second part is like the i guess the sort of like the you know um the getting good part like mm -hmm. you're actually going to get good. So stage one, just get going and it's going to be crap. You're, you're going to, you know, do crappy content to start with. And then stage two is you're actually going to become decent at what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, creating video and sort of like you're going to find your legs with that. And then stage three is like innovation. Like what, you know, can you do something that other people aren't doing? Bring in a sort of like a different, you know, just a different vibe to it, you know. Um, and you will never get to step three without steps one and two. Right. I think that that's yes. what people want. Yes. They want like, oh, what can I bring? Uh, how am I going to be different? I have to know before my first post and you will not know. Or if you think, you know, you will, it will change as you move. You know, I was exactly, watching a yeah. thing with the great Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin was on Rogan recently. Have you seen that, Scott? Yeah, but he's awesome. It's so yeah. great. And he talks about creating and that it's the teacher, right? If you create something, you just have to do it and do it and do it and do it because it's going to teach you and then people are going to respond and that's how you learn, right? And, yeah. you, and if, yeah. you know, if you want to bring whatever it is you do online, whether it's for art's sake or whether it's for building a community or whether it's for ultimately monetizing that community and having a big business and, you know, and, and being able to, you know, make passive income and i know people talk about mojitos that a lot you know? on the beach <laughs> yeah mojitos <laughs> on the beach baby life is life is grand you know um you it has to you have to start and it has to just be bad for a while and and in fact i think sometimes do you feel this scott when you take an l like when there's a loss when there's a post or a video that goes up that does poorly or you thought this thing was going to be like awesome and every other isn't. day <laughs> yeah. isn't it in a way to you i'm, I'm gonna make a, i'm gonna make an assumption and you tell me if i'm right i think in a way it excites you I think when you take an L, you you don't like it. It's not like you're like, yay, we lost. But I think there's something in you where you go, oh, and it actually pinballs you off of the bumper into the next thing. And you attack yeah. at some other angle. And in a way, I think you like it. I think you like being down yeah. at halftime and coming yeah. back to win the game. Is my yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Weird, that, right? <laughs> that's a really, really great trait, actually. That's a really great trait where you're not going to get crushed if something doesn't do well, if nobody watches the video, if nobody buys the thing. You're going to go, oh, ooh, okay, maybe I was off here. What are we going to do to change this? And then it's that process of growing, of like cutting the weeds away, you know, from the yeah, thing that you yeah, thought or like, yeah. or switching your gaze to something else that I think you really enjoy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
For sure. It's humans, we're useless, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just or, or useful, we're still, depending we're so on weird. how you think about we're, it. We're so weird, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> we're kind yeah. of like illog- illogical creatures. But yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, anyway, for me but, too, dude. No, for me, I will say this, and I know you were about to transition there. I wonder if we can make this episode, Scott, about content creation, about platform, about... Because yeah, I yeah, mean, we were we were thinking about talking about pickups, guys, <laughs> and, we, and we haven't even talked about. It, so maybe we do that next. Should we do that the next one? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I'm up for that. I'm up for that. Absolutely. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what I was, I, I wasn't actually going to transition away. What I was going to okay, do okay. is, I was, I was going to just like say how excited I am for some content creators that have actually taken the path. I guess that I'm talking about now. Yeah. Or, or so, for instance, like Layla. Like yeah. really excited for her because she's obviously doubling down on content creation yes. and, you know, we'll have all of these different options in the future. Absolutely. Some of what, and I think that the interesting thing is, you know, it's just to point out, it's, it's the monetization part of, let's say, let's say hypothetically you build up an audience, right? Yeah. yeah. The monetization part of it, even though you're in this really privileged position and you've built this audience and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. Now I've got an audience. I can, you know, I can create, you know, product for these people, whatever it is, you yeah. know, it's, that's still stressful. <laughs> well, it, it's Dude. hard and, you know, and, and I feel, and you feel it because you've been thinking about, you're yeah. You're talking to a guy that is, that is wondering about that. You know, people are asking for things from me and I haven't done it because I just know that, when I do, if I do, well, I mean, I've told people that I was going to do presets. I said, yeah, they're still yeah. not up, you know, because I just know that it's going to complicate things. Uh, and, and you're absolutely right. Hey, help us, Scott. Help, 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 help yeah. someone like me. Help yeah. someone like Layla. What's, uh, yeah, what's your thoughts well, around it, this? It's not going to complicate it as much as you think, depending on sort of like what, what, you, what you sell. Mm. Like there is easy ways to really complicate things <laughs> yeah. and i know because i've freaking done it <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you know uh let me think on this one like yeah like i am excited for them like i'm excited but i'm but i'm also like i'm like a little nervous because i know they're going to go through pain yes, yes. you know to, to, to do to, to to do the sort of like product creation thing wh- whatever that is so layla for instance there's another there's a great youtuber um Oh man, his name's Paul, uh, upright player. You know the the guy. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. PD base. PD base. Oh, I love PD base. Yeah, he man, actually, he's been killing. He's like his freaking content is awesome, and I think he's a great example of somebody who, uh, like, just started out doing his own thing. He has got an awesome voice. Just to put it out there, yeah, I think yeah, that yeah. you and him together, <laughs> power couple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. He does have a really cool voice. Yeah, yeah. He's got an awesome voice. Like, if he's listening, I do, like, I've apologized to him once before. He got his knickers in a twist with me once before. <laughs> I was going to get him to do something for SBL, and I didn't shout him back in time and stuff like that. And he thought I'd just, like, binned him, and I hadn't. Yeah. But anyway, that's the whole, you know, whole thing from, like, years ago. But anyway, so, uh, but he's awesome. And I yeah. think that, like, watching his uh journey over the last few years has been really cool and he's like getting to the place now like he's got like i'm I'm not sure how many subscribers he's got on youtube but i think it's like 50 or 100 000 subs or something like that yeah he's going to be in a real position where he can actually change his, his entire life yes that's the reality he'll be able to change his life and another one that i'm really excited about and may and and really um I guess intrigued about is Rick Beato. Oh, I am sure. really intrigued about Rick. Like I've never met Rick. Um, comes across like a freaking like what a awesome guy. Yep. Um, every video I watch, I'm sort of like super inspired by him and the guests and how he navigates those interviews and it's amazing. everything. And everybody knows who Rick Beato is, right? He's a fucking awesome uh, creator and I guess sort of like pioneer in the online music. Yes. You know. Uh, media creator space and I think that with his audience um, size if he decides I guess let let me take you right to the end he could build a 
considerably large business off the back of the brand that he's built. Yes. Um, and I'm interested, because right now he does like his books and stuff and he does sort of like downloads. You know, I, mean, I think that he does the thing that you, you're thinking about doing, you know, where like the sure. presets and stuff like sure. that. Yep. But with with the right support around him and the right kind of like input around to guide sort of like how he thinks about the back end of the business. Like obviously he's sort of like front facing and yeah. he's all about the all about, you know, doing what he's doing, like building a freaking awesome brand and creating value in the space. But he could build a massive, massive business. Massive. Absolutely. The biggest. The yep. biggest business. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, the it biggest will be interesting in to see space. someone yeah, else, sure. you know, that is, that is up and coming that I watched early content from that I loved is uh, uh, Brandon Shaw, who did, yes. who has, uh, what f- oh, dude, f- he, also he used to make videos for Spectre, for Spectre right? yeah. and Spectre yeah. would put them out on their YouTube channel, and Spectre isn't pursuing YouTube in the way that... SBL is pursuing YouTube. Let me just say yeah, that. Like, yeah. right, they're they're using it as a place to put um content, uh, like marketing content. Like, here's the new yeah. base that we're putting out, right? They're they're yeah. getting more into it, but they never were pushing it. But they hired this guy, Brandon. And Brandon, man, if you listen to this, I love you so much. He was running their Instagram as well. And so when I got in touch with Spectre, I talked to him. And then I was like, man, who's making these great videos? He would do these videos on like MCA from the Beastie Boys who played a Spectre and on Jason Newstead who played a Spectre yes. on the Black Album with Metallica. And he was like, oh, that's me. And I'm like, what? You're this content creator? And he was like, yeah, my name's Brandon. And man, I loved his style and video. And he just started, and everybody listening, please go check out this channel. <laughs> Blowing up, Exploded, man. He's getting like, dude. He I started think he a got channel. Fifty thousand subs in one month or something. Wow! Like, yes. oh, it was crazy. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Digging the greats, I believe it's digging called. It greats, might be yeah. digging with an I N apostrophe. I don't know if it's I N G or if he went I N apostrophe. I could look, but I'm not gonna right now. But digging the greats <laughs> on YouTube, and he does these deep dives into uh, really fun, nichey, like focused music genres and artists and styles and he's a bass player and a dj so he brings yeah. all of that musicality to it he's got a great voice he edits all of his own stuff he storytells he's writing the scripts he's a monster and it was yeah. so fun to see because i'm like this I, I i felt like you know when you find a band or something like in the beginning where you're like this band is amazing and then they explode and you were like i, I knew about this first <laughs> <laughs> that's the yeah, way I yeah. felt about Brandon. Yeah. I was like, we used to like, we used to like <laughs> shoot his videos back and yeah, forth. Yes. We get watched yes. by like five hundred people. Yes. And, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, 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 guys. You know, like I knew him when I knew him before. Oh, uh, it's just so <laughs> funny. But I, I just love it. I love seeing people explode like that. Find the lane. Yeah. But just so everybody knows, if you go check out Brandon on Digging the Greats, Digging the Greats. You'll go, oh, wow, this guy's great. He's probably always been great. And he has, but it took him a long time to yeah. figure out that lane. And if he hadn't have done those videos for Spectre, which everybody should go watch, they're like two to three, two to five minutes long. And it's always yeah. about like a player that played a Spectre bass on a classic track. And they're so fun. They're just candy. They're delicious, but they're really also nutritious. They're informative. It's all the things I want in a YouTube video. It's fun. It's informative. It's value led. Um, you know, but if he hadn't done those things, he would not have informed himself on how to make this monster YouTube channel that he's now crushing with. Yeah. So it's about that process, right? It's about that thing that you were saying, Scott, of like, you have to just start doing it. And, and then it's about community honor, you know, building up value for a community and then potentially down the road, it's about monetization, but you are so for, right. For, yeah. I, I've actually thought about Brandon and like his monetization, like how he might monetize. And that's actually like, eluding me at the minute like i it's i found it hard mm. to sort of like ne- like most people when i actually look at their like what they're doing you know I, I can see like a clear through line of oh they're doing this in terms of the back-end business mm-hmm. that they should build around that um this is what they should do and like when i say this is what they should do i base it on um like what product or 
business model they should follow that's going to be um, simple, easy, profitable, like mm. those three things, you know, like, because it doesn't need to be like that. You know, when I see people going on sort of like tours and stuff, and I'm like, wow, that's not simple. It's not easy. And it's not profitable. <laughs> you know, right. like it's none of the three. Yeah. yeah they've, sure. they've just built like 100,000, 200,000, like maybe more followers. Yeah. Let's go on a tour. I'm like, wow. But I'm not saying don't go on a tour. I'm saying so from, from a pure, if I put my business head on, right? Like, well, even with my business head on, tours, great. But it's certainly not, you know, it's... It's, it's not a giant money maker. It's not a cash it, machine. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. You're going to need something else. Maybe it's sort of like, it's it's more it's more of a content creation thing yes, right. rather than... It's a brand sort of like, play. <laughs> it's a brand play rather than yeah. sort of like, hey, let's create a let's let's create a business. Um, but for yeah, so for most people, I can see them. So for like Rick Beato, it's it's music education based. Of course, yes, it is absolutely like I, yes. I think it's music education based. Um, it's probably multi instrument. Um, it's 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 online because that's going to be more profitable. Um, yeah, and it's probably involves the best players in the world. It's like Steve Weiser, Steve Lukath is doing that. Like, like it's, it's kind of pretty simple. Like I, I say simple. I didn't say easy building it out. Yes, is obviously but you can complex, see the, right? the through line. You see it, you see the through yeah. line to it. Yeah. yeah. I see the through line, but with Brandon, it's interesting. I, I like watch his videos and they're awesome, but I'm not sure it is education. Do you know what's it's, interesting yeah. is, is Brandon is trying to make, he's trying to push push beyond like i say this in quotes like just the bass community like he's a bass player but he does i get the vibe anyway that he doesn't want to only serve the bass community yes, so he's absolutely. making this yeah. more broad content yeah, that appeals to yeah. more like music lover which the audience is way way bigger of course but yes. then you also that you know so wow you've got a bigger potential pool but also you don't have that juicy, like that amazing thing about a niche, you know, like there's something about a smaller community than everybody. Because if you talk about like people that like music, ah, that's like everybody, but yeah. not everybody is tuning in to learn how to play the bass guitar. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like for him, it's like not education based. It's maybe if I had to just sort of like go to the head 10 seconds, it would be probably, uh, so you're a musician and you want to be a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. Well, I went to from like zero to a hundred thousand subscribers in three months. And I've got a course that will teach you exactly how mm -hmm. the exact process I used and the system that I used to do it. It would be that mm -hmm. it would be because I would guess that there's a lot of musicians, obviously watching the channel, a lot of young musicians probably watching the channel who want to be creators, you know, side note, all of the surveys that have been done in schools over the last few years, they all of the kids want to be YouTubers. Want to be YouTubers they yes. all want to be YouTubers, all right? So, so, so it's that sort of like, it's that, that audience, but graduated. So they're probably, you know, they're probably age sort of like 17 on the low end to, I would imagine sort of like late twenties. It's that category yes. watching his channel it, and they're musicians. That's, that's the focus I would, I would say, mm. and then focus it on, on more sort of like growing a YouTube, like becoming a YouTube creator. Look at you, Divine. I, just consulting. I think you just consulting <laughs> away here, dude. You're just providing that free consult, that business consult. <laughs> Man, okay. Well, let me let me get back to something you said because there probably are some people listening going, hold on, like I, I don't I don't want to grow a business. I want to play the bass. I want to I want a gig. I want to and like, you know, someone probably heard you say like no, touring, no. But but here is something that I know about myself. Well I didn't I didn't I didn't say touring not for a musician. Like just to, I guess sort of like just for clarity, I meant sort of like let's say um Scary Pockets, for instance. That's yes. a great, a great, you know, great yes. one to take. Like, because they tour. That's what I was thinking about. So they created a uh, a really fantastic YouTube channel brand. It's a band, Jack Conte. Conte? Conte? Whatever. Conte, yep. Con Conte? Yep. <laughs> There's yep. three ways of saying it. <laughs> Jack Conte, he, he's kind of sort of like the guy who's sort of like the... He's the uh, the skipper, and uh, <laughs> the skipper. Yes, <laughs> he's the skipper, <laughs> the captain. And, yeah, yeah, and they're doing sort of like tours and stuff like that, which is wicked. 
Um, but th- th- like for them, for instance, there's obviously opportunities to monetize as well. Like Jack will know that he's a freaking smart dude. Yep, absolutely. And, and that, that, you know, uh, if it was just like a monetization play, like a, if it was purely based on sort of like, let's, you know, let's make a good amount of revenue and let's make it as profitable as possible. It certainly wouldn't be touring. Jack knows that already. Of course. You know, and, and it would be, there'd be a different play. But yes. just to point out that Jack is their skipper and he has got his hands full. Sure so does. He's probably yeah, not even I, thinking about, you know, it, that with, with, with scary pockets. And I just think in the musician space, right? Like if, if we, if, if we're not thinking about this whole thing like a business, if you're not thinking about this whole thing like a business and platform, you're thinking about, no, I, I want to I want to just play. I want to be on the road. I want to do that thing, you know, and whatever. Do you not I'm- think that everybody thinks about it like a business, though? Do you not think that this is sort of like, like just like musicians? Everybody's like, everybody's on the freaking bread line. Or at least uh, I was. <laughs> I felt I mean, like I was. It, well, it depends on who we're. It depends on who we're talking to. Like, are you asking me that question for this podcast audience, or are you asking for like just like all musicians, our mates? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> our friends that we hang out with and stuff like that. You know, like that that have wondered about getting online and stuff like that. My assumption is that like a lot of them would be like, oh. I'm just like gigging and I'm gigging and I'm gigging and I never get paid anymore mm-hmm. because wage wage rates have been the same for yeah, like the last forever. 10 years. Yes, yes. You know, yeah, and, and I I guess I, I know. do I know I know both, man. I have very very good friends that are like how can I make a more profitable thing even though they're maybe not saying that. I think there is a thing in music. I'm just going to say this. There is a thing in music that once you start talking about it like a business and once you start to use words like profit margin and grow your audience, it turns a lot of musicians off because in music, you're supposed to just be about the art. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, only, yeah, yeah. it's supposed to be pure. It's supposed to be, <laughs> you're supposed to starve. It's cool <clears throat> if you don't make any money, right? And I think that that symptom lingers like i'm thinking about a guy like Corey wong obviously very very business savvy content savvy but think about what he does on tour he brings a giant band yeah a giant band and he kind of always has even his first record release he brought in a bunch of people. And if he was just thinking maybe more about money, more about like, ah, I'm going to slim that horn section down. I'm not going to have Larry and Jerry, yeah, the I, wind I don't men. Even, yeah, I don't think he thinks anything to do with that as a money-making. The, I know. Money, like if you look at the sort of like, the, yeah, sort of like internally, like what he's thinking about is like, he sees that live band has nothing really to do with sort of like money creation and more yes. to do with, more to do with brand. And so... I think the good thing about that is it makes the other musicians who love him, who are skeptical of businessman Corey, who are skeptical of business model musician mode, go, oh, this dude's real. Oh, this dude's legit. You know, like this dude, this dude is all about the music. And that plays into the brand, you know, that yeah, plays yeah. into like, oh, he's he's not offering to sell me a bunch of stuff. I mean, now, he, you know, he's got a signature guitar. He has a course now, but he does a really excellent job, I think, of doing both. Of He's making content and art and records because he has to. It's in his DNA. He has to do that. He would feel, I think, cheap or cheapened if he were only... If he weren't touring, if he weren't really uh, making records, he would feel like, ah, uh, like now it's not something, it's something else. I'm yeah. not a musician anymore. I'm a businessman. And, and that is, that's interesting. I think that we all struggle with that a little bit. How do you feel? How do you feel about the dichotomy or the, or the, is the body of water between those things, musician and businessman? Is the body of water a stream or is it the Atlantic Ocean? Oh, 
Well, first of all, I just want to say that I love Corey Wong, and not only <laughs> as a musician, but just he fascinates me so much. Yeah, he is just like, like <laughs> so good. He's incredible. And I don't mean just as a guitar player. I mean sort of like as an operator. Yes, he is a fucking fantastic world class operator. Sure is, and and that is. Yeah, like really inspirational. Like almost like I'm just like it's almost too much to take. And I'm like it's too dude, much. And I got to interview him for SBL. He did an interview for us for the slap bass accelerator, where yeah, he showed yeah. up. And if you took the slap bass accelerator, faithful podcast listener, you got to see the Corey Wong interview. And he is sat there with his white jazz bass, just kicking ass and talking about the bass and he had he made time for that man Corey, if you ever hear this episode of the podcast thank you for doing that it was so fun but yeah but right absolutely dude, he is he is an incredible operator yeah and yet he still makes time to do the things that aren't going to bring him the same kind of revenue like he wouldn't have had to do that thing uh, well, for I, us i, I think yeah i think that um he yeah like but yeah, i think that he sees the full picture as yes. well you yes, know yes. like he sees the full picture and and people like that uh, really fascinate me so yeah just incredibly um impressed by Corey all the time like yeah. the, the skits that they do on youtube oh. the, the 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 content he creates and the vibe of it like he's got a really clear vision of the the brand feel he wants to create yes. and it just executes always at the highest level. Yep. Um, yeah. Awesome. So, but to your question, the the body the, of water, the between, body of water between, the, the between what, being a musician and only caring about the art and businessmen only caring about the money. I know those things have to, but it seems to me that there is a distance between those two things. And I just want to know how you view that. I do not know. <laughs> I think, I don't know if it's as binary as that. I don't know yeah. if it's, is, you know, I, I don't think it's as black as white, black and white. I think that different individuals are more naturally accustomed to been naturally been able to navigate the sort of like the financial side and they'll see yeah like you know they'll they'll just see the bigger picture whereas some people might they'll be just like thinking gig to gig you know they'll be like right got 200 books for that 300 books for that, da, 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 da. yes you yes. know they won't see this sort of like larger uh picture so i i don't know is there a body of water between the two I think there is. You do. You think there is. Yeah, definitely. Yes. And, and, and what, yeah. What, what do you think sort of like break it um, down? What I think it is, at least what it is for me or was, or the thing that I struggle with is if I, I want, I think what's cool is being a musician is I, like, there's, there's something inside of me that feels like, yes, making stuff, you know, playing on records, doing stuff that doesn't necessarily pay, but that is contributing to this lovely world of music and art that is seems sort of in a sense like separated from the financial side. You're doing it because you uh -huh. love it. Uh -huh. It's passion. It's right. It's art for art's sake. It's your, you're striving to find that thing because you love it. I mean, you feel this too, because you love sounds and playing and harmony. And you're like, and you're going after that. And when you're playing the bass, Scott, and when you're digging in and going, oh, and appreciating something, like we're listening to Hubert Eves with Erica Badu, you're not going, oh, the money that can be made. For no, you're in a pure moment of love yeah, yeah. for this Oh, art. yeah, of course, yeah. Yes, of course. And, and so I sometimes think that, like, you have to stay there to be legit, so I think I'm probably just projecting and asking Maybe, you because yeah. I feel this way. Maybe you know? like, I feel this way. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, I'm well, asking like, you if you feel care. this way too. You know, I guess I, I'm asking. I, I don't. I, I don't. I think that 
Uh, like if we take sort of like Corey Wong, for instance, I think that he loves the music and all of that stuff, yes. right? But then he can see the bigger picture. And I think that he's also thinking about, well, I love performing. I love doing all this, but he wants to build a freaking massive brand around himself. Yeah. Like, and I say but- brand, I mean, sort of like, like loosely, yes. you know, I'm just sort of like, but he wants to to grow big. Yes. And he doesn't necessarily want to grow big from a financial perspective. Right. It's sort of like from a, you know, like a, just because he's probably just chasing the dream that mm-hmm. we all wanted to do when we were kids, right? Want to be a famous guitar player. What right. a, I mean, that, that yes. thing, right? And he's doing it. But mixed in with that, he will be very savvy with the financials. Like, he'll have to be. Of course. Otherwise, he just wouldn't be able to operate at that level. But I guess what I'm saying is he's not you. And I could be wrong about this. Someone could say, oh, well, I've heard him say brand a lot. But I don't hear him use that terminology. It's almost like the the musicians that are really actually really killer about brand and crafting business they know it, but they don't say it because they know that their audience thinks it's lame or thinks oh, yeah. that it's he corporate. Oh, yeah, he wouldn't say the – yeah, yes. he wouldn't use the word brand, but right. that's what he's built. Like, you're, that you're, is absolutely – Of course, without yeah, question. it's just sort of right. like – I think that, you know, we could we could call it different things, but I think that he's – it's brand, and I think that even if he maybe doesn't think it is brand, he's been incredibly intentional about it. Incredibly. I, I agree. Yes. Like the the standout of all of the sing like musicians I can think of, he's sort of like leaned the most in that direction mm. um, that I can think. Yeah, um, like Wolfpack. Like I think that Corey's even like leaned e- like because Wolfpack have got a brand. And, and if somebody was like, "What is brand?" I would say brand is what people feel internally when you walk into a room. Hmm. You know, like what you stand for, what's sort of like, what's your vibe as a, it's certainly not anything to do with like, you know, the Marriott, <laughs> you know, yes. it's like yes. the Marriott has no brand. Nike yeah, you're, you're has a talking, brand. You're talking the hotel, the Marriott. Yeah. yeah. I can't, I can't yeah. think of anything when I think of that. I think of I'm, a I'm trying hotel. To think just, yeah. yeah. Just shit. Right. <laughs> just like, I'm not taking anything away to the Marriott, but like, I know if Nike or yeah. Apple op- opened a hotel, I know exactly what to expect. Yes, yes. Because they have a brand. Yeah, I can see they, it in my mind. Yes. Right. If Corey, yeah. like, releases an apparel line, yes. I know what to expect. Right. If he releases music. Have some stripes music, in there. Have some stripes exactly, in there. Yeah, exactly, yeah, right? Yeah. If he yeah. does, like, a funny skit video, I know the style. Right. I Like, it's it's all sort of, like, intertwined. It's like art intertwined, isn't yes. it? With, yes. with uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's super interesting, isn't it? So when I say brand, I don't mean anything about sort of, like, in a corporate way. I mean sort of, like, art, inter- art and vibe and taste all intertwined yes. into a sort of like subliminal way. But there is very specific ways that people do communicate that. So through Corey, it's the music, it's the look, it's yeah. how he dresses, yeah. it's the moves on stage, it's the band, it's how they dress, it's it's the, you know, it's the bass drum cover. With, yeah, you know, it's set got the, design. The one, yeah, the set design, it's everything, yep. right? Yep. It's all really intentional and that all adds into that brand. Same that, same thing that Apple did, same thing that, um, that uh, Nike did. And, you know, there's a lot of different, like Brandon, for instance, that we were talking about before, mm-hmm. right? He's got like this, you can feel like the, the visual brand uh, kind of developing. Absolutely. Like, You're right about that. Yes. Yeah. If he sort of like starts releasing stickers or pins or you t-shirts know what or whatever, like. I know what they're going to yeah, look like. Yeah, I, I can know see the font. I, yes. I can see the font. I know yeah. what he stands for. I can get that feel. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. Then it's my problem, dude. Then it's just then, I, <laughs> then I'm just a mess. Ah. So maybe, maybe, <laughs> but but you know, I don't I don't know. But I think it's you know there might be it'd be really interesting to hear sort of like what other people feel about this as well and how they think about money. I I do think that musicians are, can be naturally uncomfortable about money. Yeah, you're right. Uh, somebody did, did something. You know, uh, Nate Worth, who uh, yes. Um, plays percussion from uh, for Snark Puppy. Well, yep. I'm looking to uh, get him on a project that we're doing over here in the UK. You know, they're like the album project. We're trying to get Nate on it and stuff oh, like that. Cool. And he did something awesome. 
In the email, he was like, yeah, bang, it sounds wicked, super interested in being involved in the project. Um, I've attached uh, a PDF with, you know, my like daily rates and travel and stuff like that. So just check it out and tell me if that's all, all good. I was like, Incredible. that's how to do it. That's wow. that's how to do it. What what an amazing piece of advice that yeah. that you just dropped here and that Nate gave. Like, yeah, that's incredible. It wasn't sort of like a typed, you know, he didn't sort of like in the in the email say, well, well, I, you know, I charge this, and he has to feel uncomfortable about it and all of that oh. shit. He's like, oh. I've just I've attached the, my uh, PDF with all my you know rates and stuff like that. So Dang. you know, check it out. Let me know if that's all good. Oh, I was that's like, that's excellent. So good. <laughs> well, and that's man. I just I just had a flash to a thing where I was just talking to an artist on the phone who wanted me to play on something, and I did the thing that you just said, dude. I was like, oh well, usually I get this, but I just love to play great music, so it doesn't matter, whatever. And. Uh, you know what you know what is the move what now what I want to take from this is to say oh for sure I'll shoot you an email with all that stuff instead exactly. of actually talking about it yeah, because exactly, then yeah. you can say what you want and then you can then they have an opportunity to check that out and either have sticker shock or go wow that's actually a really great deal or any <laughs> any reaction in between yeah, and then they can yeah. take their time to respond instead of making it weird on the phone, which I probably did to this excellent artist. <laughs> Dude, but, 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 let me say this. Hang on, because I want to take it back. I know I, let me just take it back for a second. Nate is in Snarky Puppy, and Nate ha can justify those rates. Let's talk to someone who's listening to this podcast now that is saying, I'm not Casey Neistat. I'm not Nate from Snarky Puppy. I'm not Corey Wong. In fact, uh, now if you've made it this far in, in this episode of the podcast, you probably want to create content, right? But let's talk about the person who doesn't have a big gig, does not have the leverage to send I don't that think PDF. It's I don't think it's attached to it. I think that it's just a really elegant way of mm. sidestepping any kind of, like, what what it's saying is... And he's, it was clear, he's like, hey, you know, like, there's, I've, I've attached the PDF, you know, check it out, let me know if there's any issues. So what he's actually saying is, here's what I charge everybody. Here's my he's offer, not, yes. Yeah, no, he's, it, like, he's he's openly saying, like, this is what I charge, yes. like, a day or yes. a week, whatever, right? He's sort of like, this is what I charge, and uh, and hey, if, if it's an issue, let me know. That's what, it's, so, and he... It, it, it's it, it sidesteps pro, any pro kind level. of exactly it's so cool isn't it i was like that's so ob it's so obvious but i like i love these sort of like little hacks that you know you get like it's so obvious but um probably not that many people do it no. so i think that yeah it's, but would uh, this work thing. because this flies in the face of the thing that i have been the model that i've been going on for a long time which which maybe now i need to reevaluate which is the old <laughs> justin meldel johnson model of if it's cool i say yes so his whole it thing is, is yeah but but like but you're still going to have to talk about money you're right you're still going to have to talk about money and it and it like and it and it just it removes mm. it just tell it, all it does is just tell me your daily rate it, like it removes mm. any of that sort of like them going like well we've got like 200 bucks <laughs> and, and you being like well, well you know I'll be just 300 bucks yeah. it just it removes it completely and i think Man. that yeah what let me just tell anybody listening who's interested about this what i have done for the longest time until today <laughs> is i have said here's what i do here's typically what i like to get but bottom line is i like making cool stuff this sounds like cool stuff so just you tell me which is uh, a slightly less elegant way of having it written down. So a lot of times I have the direct conversation where I'm talking about it with someone, either on a Zoom call yeah, or yeah. on a phone call, or and it is so much more awkward to actually talk about it than yeah. to fill out a a PDF. Ooh, baby. Yeah. PDF. Just, just sends a PDF. Yeah. And it's cool because it standardizes it as well. Yes, it does. Because you're like, oh, th this is how much they charge for everybody. And he was open. He said, look, if it's an issue, let me, let, 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 we can talk yeah, about it. Yeah, talk about it. We Ooh, can but, talk about it. Yeah. But then that ball's in your court. He's not starting out by saying, 
here's what I charge. And, um, oh, but, but don't worry. Happy to give you a deal, <laughs> <laughs> which is what I do <laughs> because I'm, because I'm, because this is why, because I never want to lose out on an opportunity that I think yeah. is cool due to money. I've said this before on the pod. I got roasted. A clip went up of me oh, on, the, did on, you? on, 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 Yes, in shorts on YouTube, on the SBL channel, I said the money is the least important thing that you're going to get from this interaction. And I do believe that. But everybody was like, well, you got to pay rent and you got to eat food. And bro, it sounds like you came from money. And no. Yeah. yeah, Uh, yeah. (laughs) Can you you remember when the whole like people might not remember this, but like back in the ye olden days when like Mm. I was going to say when Ian and I were lads, but we actually were we were probably like mid 20s. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of discussion about playing for free should you play for free mm-hmm. isn't it like is that is that completely gone away that conversation no 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 D- there's still people still talk about oh that. there's still old guard people yelling about you know don't go on fiverr and do things because it ruins the session industry and i've heard yeah, yeah, yeah predominant yeah, yeah, yeah. like killing bass players make that garbage argument i think that argument is garbage i think I do think I still am a fan of when you don't have name leverage before your Nate in Snarky Puppy, you, what you do have is time and you're trying to build resume. I think that you absolutely do stuff for free. Uh, now that said, maybe not. Hey, just, maybe just for experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah maybe yeah, you can yeah, send yeah, that PDF, yeah. but best yeah. of luck to you. If you send that PDF, say I got a thousand bucks a tune or whatever it is, be- see how many opportunities you get. I think in the beginning you have time. Time is your leverage. Your name is not yet let is not yet your leverage, your brand. You have no brand. So before you have brand and before you have name leverage, you have time. That's your leverage. Spend that time on getting reps, getting experience that will lead to those other opportunities that will pay. And that is, Hey, I I am so firmly, I believe in that. That's how it worked for me. Um, but I know that people are like, no way you have to, your time needs to be valued, but think about it. You, you take your car in to be repaired by someone who's brand new. Would you rather like, maybe that person is going to work under someone who has more experience. That's a bad analogy. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as you went into that analogy, I was like, I'm, I'm, no, I was like, I, I can't. Do you know when you can normally feel where the analogy is yeah. going? Yeah. I, was like, I can't feel where this analogy is going. And, th- and then I was like, oh, neither can Ian. <laughs> ah, dude, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is before, I, I think that before you can have the big day rate, you have to have experience, you have to be really good. You have to have people that want to work with you, that re- that chose you first. And that progression to that area is not because you have a PDF that you email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For it's sure, because for sure. you have, yeah. it's because you've worked your ass off. You've really been handed uh, a, a lot of sticky situations. You've done a lot of things for free. You've built up a resume and then you start to get paid. But that I people hate hate me that I think that. Um, well, but that's okay. I think <laughs> I think that sometimes <laughs> it's lost in translation. Sometimes yes, I yes, think yes. that like we all did that. We were all young. We all gigged for whatever you know, five quid or whatever. Of course, you know, or, you know like less. You yeah, know, I did a gig. I did a gig the other day. I got paid fifteen quid. <laughs> <laughs> that gig looked killing, though. That looked killing. It looks so. It was cool. an awesome gig, man. Right? Yeah, yeah, and like yeah, people yeah. may be thinking, he did a gig for fifteen quid. Well, I actually donated it to the drummer because he 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 drove further. But <laughs> amazing, uh, amazing. Uh, yeah, but I uh, I, I just sort of like I just want to play with play with great friends yes. and, and and make great music. And I think that. <sighs> I think, what do I think about it? I think there's absolutely a place, especially when you're sort of like cutting your teeth to just go out and do it. And who cares what you're getting paid? Just do it. Take every opportunity that comes your way. You have to. Bar none. Just get in there and just learn, okay? And obviously there's this sort of like transition from there into, 
you know, but it's so small fry, small fry stuff, at least for my, my, you know, yeah, my, uh, from my vantage point, it's kind of sort of like people worrying about that shit. I'm like, Worry about the the bigger things to worry about. Oh, (laughs) definitely. And think about it in terms of making content. I mean, we said this at the very beginning of this, that when you start making content, you're going to suck. So you can't try to monetize right away. It's the same thing with music. When you start playing music, you're going to suck. You can't monetize it right away. And also, they're not sort of like connected as well. Like when I was like in my uh, like late teens and I was playing and stuff and I was doing gigs for like five quid or whatever, I also got gigs for like 250 quid. Right, you're right. You know, they they weren't connected. They weren't like, oh, he's just done this five pound, this gig for five quid. We shall not pay him for this. I mean, like. Yeah, you're so right. It depends on the gig. Depends on the gig. Of course. Like, I don't know, like somebody that might have thought this through. A little more than I have might have some sort of like opposing opinions, and I'd love to sit down and and talk to people about that. I think it's a really interesting um, interesting conversation point. But I'd, but I do think like for, for you know for young uns coming up, it, there always has to be leeway to just get out there, do their thing, and you know if they're doing it for free or for like a few quid here and there. I mean that's cool. I think it's always existed. It will always exist. Yes. You know, I, I think it's not sort of like something that anybody should be scared of or anything like that. Yeah. Scott Devine, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Final content question is this. You're listening to this. You've made it to this point in the podcast. You don't, you still don't know where to start. A lot of highfalutin ideas. Talking Corey Wong, talking Casey Neistat, a lot of highfalutin ideas. You want to start making some content. What is the first piece of advice that you would give to someone who wants to start putting themselves out on the internet? What is the first piece of advice? Oh, don't think about anything other than posting like the first piece of content. Don't think about growing an audience. Don't think about monetizing. Just think I need to film a piece of content and I need to put it on the internet like you know on instagram on youtube wherever it is and then here's the key thing and then you need to do it again and then again and again and i'd really try and do it like ideally four to five times a week and then then you know other questions will come up after that right but just the it's the sort of like you've just got to put one foot in front of the other and just and keep doing that repeatedly and 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 at some point you'll be like holy shit i'm walking <laughs> you know it's <laughs> yes it's, yes it's so just it, that it's yeah. about frequency and repetition for you and yeah. just doing it no matter what the content is doesn't matter what the content is right. it could be you speaking it could be you playing it could be you listening to music and reacting to it it could be anything you just need to put one foot one foot in front of the other that's the most important thing okay and, and like go back in people's timelines like great like huge oh, instagrammers excellent. huge youtubers and they, they change everything do you know i mean like if you go back far enough unless they start deleting stuff which many people do now but if you go far back far enough a lot of the time what they what, what you see right now is not what they started with you're right you're totally you know? right and yeah. any any youtuber instagram content creator that you admire out there do that that's actually an excellent exercise to see yeah. what they did where they came, came from you love adam neely go watch his first videos i think they're all yeah. still up they're very was, different he, than what he does he was now. doing stuff like me he was doing sort of like yeah. bass lessons bass yeah. lessons just, yes. just just talking based on yes. no video essays, none yes. of that crap. Just well, it's not crap. It's awesome. I'm just like using that term, but none, like, of, none that of that stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah, none yeah. of that stuff. Yeah, it was just straight up base lessons. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's a bunch of people like that. I was like watching a a guy on YouTube this morning uh, while I was sat on the can. <laughs> <laughs> I just yes, wanted yes, to add yes. that in there yeah, because thanks. it's yeah, true. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. yeah. Oversharing. Great. Now I've got that image. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I'm like sitting. I'm sitting. 
uh, somewhat. And, uh, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Well, you can't take it back now. You can't retract it. We all know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this guy's sort of like popping on YouTube. He's in the business space. And and I was lo- 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 looking back and I was like, wow. And sort of like seven months ago, his content was completely different. It was just yeah. like him interviewing people. It was like, you know, just like regular podcast style thing. And then over the last four months, he's been he's doing a new format and it's just popped from it and blown up. It's really interesting that I think that so much of this, uh, so much, you know, you, you know, you freaking heard me say this before, dude. So much of the the growth of people's YouTube channels, Instagram channels, and stuff like that is to do with the format. Yes. It's, it's, oh, it's so important. Yeah. Like this guy, change your format, boom. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, PBD that we talked about. What's what's specific about him that's different? It's his format. He's got this beautiful format down. Yes. Kills it. Um, Brandon, who's doing the oh, uh, digging format. the greats, yep. it's his format. Yeah, uh, you know, like it's it's the scary pockets. It's the yep. format. The Corey fo- Wong what, on the one, uh, exactly. Great format. It's, yes, yeah, exactly. It's always the format. Yeah. And if you don't know what format means, it just means like the the way the wrapping of the content, how it's presented, what your shot looks like, what you know, like how where your camera is the whole how the video is structured but but I, but that stuff is that stuff is later that stuff is later if you're it is, thinking yeah. about it's starting you can right? experiment that's sort of like hey you put one foot in front of the other and now you're yes. like oh where, where should i walk yes <laughs> that's and, like that more of a question you know? and let me just add this to that to that brilliant bit of advice let me add this don't worry about gear that was my problem i'm a gear guy so i was like oh what preamp should i record my bass through what <laughs> yeah, yes yeah. exactly take yeah. your phone if you have a smartphone buy a tripod from amazon which is the first tripod i had stick it in there and or or just hold the phone and talk. But if you want to do some playing, or even just I haven't got a tripod. Anything you've seen of me <laughs> using my phone, I just use like I use pedals, dude. I like to use prop, bass pedals. To prop up and the, I just yeah, like yeah, prop yeah. it up and I just press record and go. Dude, that's incredible. Yeah. So we'll like, see. The there you part, go. Yeah, for the most part, I don't like plug anything in. Yes. I, like, well, I plug into my amp, but I've got no like mic or anything like that. Like I right. did a little bit of that last year actually, but but for the most part, all of the stuff t- today that I've raw. created, this is raw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. And I get in the weeds with that stuff. And that sometimes, I mean, I love it. I love producing videos that I think sound really good and look good. But then sometimes some of the stuff that pops is the more raw stuff. So don't be like me and worry about gear. Get your phone, stick it in front of your face or in front of your base and start. Face and base, you heard it here. Right, dudes, we've got to go. and We're going to record an episode all about pickups that you will hear next week. Yes, we are. <laughs> Dude, when is this being published? Uh, I can tell you. I can tell you. When is um, it being um, published? Um, is, it, is, is this coming out the 26th? I th- no, I think the 6th. Is this the 6th? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> Where were you looking at? Are you in the uh, yeah. interviews and podcast? Yeah. I'm in the, the podcast sixth of what? notes working doc. Oh, the 6th of what? February? 6th of February? Oh, sorry. Oh, that was, maybe. oh, nope, nope. Second, second of February. Second of February. Is yeah. Winterbase at Build School still on? Yeah. Great, you can win a base. <laughs> <laughs> it's in fact, it, it, well, well, it, it says here on the notes: last week of win a base, build a school. Question mark. Oh, well, there mark? you go. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, well, I'm going to tell you now: we're giving away fifty thousand dollars worth of base yeah, gear, yeah, yeah. like Ken Smiths and Sadowskis and Music Mans and Rickenbackers and like all yes. of this amazing shit. And you can enter the competition completely for free. All you need to do is go to win a base buildaschool.com and also Ian when you record the intro for this as well just mention that as well That'll oh be you know it baby golden okay guys we'll see you in a bit oh and next week I wanted to do it this week but next week what we should start doing is ending the podcast of player of the week base oh, player of the week love it we'll do one each every week let's do oh, it let's it. start it next I love week it. amazing hey make go make cool stuff for the internet um maybe start right after this like instead of going i mean i would love to say like hey go listen to an, another episode of the podcast but i'm gonna say instead of that use your phone for a different purpose put it in front of your face put it in front of your base make cool stuff for the internet we want to see it yeah yeah and then link us to it where it is on only fans and we'll we'll subscribe <laughs> 
<laughs> You're an eighth grader. You're an eighth grader. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Guys, we love you. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye. Take care, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>